Hey there guys, what's going on? Flow State Jedis, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the art of seduction. We're continuing that series, okay? Today we're talking about mastering the art of insinuation, okay? What insinuation means is it is implying something, it is suggesting something, okay? We use this term in hypnosis, suggestibility. Oftentimes before doing a, a training with a hypnotist or, or going through a program with hypnosis, you've got to understand that there's a suggestibility quiz that tells you whether you're more left-brained or right-brained, okay? And according to that, there's going to be different levels of knowledge, different, you know, types of imagery that you'll receive through the hypnotic script, okay? But... This is just basically a way of you dropping hints, okay? Subtly and briefly creating micro moments of fantasy, merging fantasy with reality. And the main metaphor that's given in The Art of Seduction in the book by Robert Greene is actually the metaphor of the seed. Okay, so you plant the seed, the soil is prepared and it just becomes naturally a part of the earth, right? You don't need to try to overwater it or just try, it's just there, it's going to grow, okay? You don't know where it came from, but it is going to grow. But you know where it came from, so in a sense, we, we yearn this sense of mystery and enigma. We want to remain enigmatic and that's exciting to us when something doesn't make absolute sense when we haven't made sense of something that's where our mind latches on to you see so insinuation is a way to make people think and you're not being too obvious when you're being too needy and too obvious you're being very direct people see through you and uh, you know they they start to get more defensive on the defense like oh this person is really into me like whoa right instead of you know if you promise to be good will go get some ice cream, right? Which is a different frame of mind because from that angle, you're challenging, you're teasing, you're flirting, you see? Whereas in the other side, you're you're like, oh, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Like that's <laughs> not really going, like she knows she's beautiful in a sense. You get what I mean? Like what is unique about her beauty that stands out? Start to understand and, and use this power of insinuation and being more subtle in your communication style and allow them to enter your realm with curiosity. Okay? So planting seeds that grow into something so that it appears as their own idea. So your target's mind will basically get influenced by this understanding, okay? So if you plant a seed and you just kind of change the topic, it will eventually uh, grow, okay? It will sprout into a giant tree eventually. So let's say that, you know, you're talking to someone, say, yeah, I'm from Germany, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So in a sense, you would just go Germany, oh, you're trouble, and then you just move on. Right. And she doesn't know, like maybe you have experience with German girls or whatever. Right. Uh, in a sense, I'm just giving you that as an example. Right. Not necessarily that you have to go about and do that. Right. But in a sense, that's just an example of kind of plant a seed. And, and usually it spurs some kind of doubt or insecurity or or something where she looks back and she goes, wait a minute. I'm thinking about that guy again. And when he said that comment, when he made that comment over there. It was kind of weird and abrupt, wasn't it? Like, she only realizes that way later. But in the moment, it's subconscious, right? It's it's happening very fast. And, and again, you don't want to appear manipulative or, or that you're trying to, you know, get her to drink too much or all these, you know, distasteful behaviors, right, and culture that, that we see. You want to have a strong ethical background when you go into the art of seduction because then you can get yourself out of problems okay you got to create a sub language a sub language is a subconscious language even robert green mentions this so let's say that you are saying to them you're feeling kind of hungry but what you're really saying is 
let's get pizza and flirt. Okay. Now you're not saying that let's get pizza and flirt, but it comes across in your mannerisms, in your demeanor, right? Like the examples that they gave in the book is like, for instance, Madame, uh, I think her name was Rochier or whatever, right? Like the French woman. She, she was banal, banal just means boring, but she had this excited look in her eyes. So the face speaks louder than words sometimes. It has its own language, the face, right? So when you can use your facial expressions and understand other people's micro expressions, it's gonna really, really help you out. So you wanna use this power of contrast when it comes down to insinuation. Like for instance, boldness with that sense of retraction. Okay, you make a very bold comment and then you make a, well, you know, you kind of take down the intensity of it. It's like a push-pull in your communication style. Okay? So you say something like, I fucking love grandma's cookies. Right? Like that's very bold. But then you back it up with, you know, my grandma's such a sweet woman. She will do literally anything to feed you, right? And that comment, like that entire phrase, right? Where you go, a bold statement, you know? You're dropping the F-bomb, you're, you're, you're boom, right? It's like a mic drop, but then there is a, a slow transition that gets the topic to release pressure. What that does is, so you create pressure, release pressure, create pressure, release pressure. That's kind of how I want you to think about it. It's a compression of the sexual tension into the moment. It is an understanding that, you know, ambiguity is such an attractive quality. And you've got to understand this energy of the libertine, okay? The libertine back in the day in the Shakespearean times, they used to be so free and uh, coming from the word liberty, right? So freedom, where you feel so free and so unattached to the outcome that you are completely not attached or programmed or, or shackled onto any dogmas or old beliefs that are stopping you from seducing, okay? But what a lot of us have is we have these mental programs that stop us from actually being our most seductive selves. We have different ways in which, you know, we hold our bodies or different mannerisms that we do, or we're giving too much interest, for instance. like. When in doubt, direct indirection is the better route, they said in the book, okay? But, you know, sometimes people will take what you say in the wrong way. And this is where the true power of the power of insinuation comes in, okay? Associations, to reassociate something, to reframe something into something new. For example, in the book, The Art of Seduction, there is an example of the man of Count, uh, I think his name was Count St. Germain, right, in the book. And essentially, you know, he started to speak about the elixir of life and, and the philosopher's stone. And he used to just throw these things into conversation. Now, of course, whatever you speak about, people will start to associate with you. Okay, so if you start talking philosophy, people will see you as a philosopher. If you start, you know, talking about very crude or rude things, people will think that you're a very kind of, you know, rude or brutal type of person, right, in a sense. So however you communicate, that is how you will be portrayed. So start to understand that, you know, what are you associating with interactions, with the word love, with relationships, with the world, with money, with, you know, having a career? What are you associating with what she's saying or he's saying, right? In a sense. And a lot of people, you know, they watch these videos to become more seductive. Other people also watch these videos to, you know, kind of see through <laughs> the seducer's mirage. And so they can not be manipulated by people, right? So both ways are, are great. If you're watching his video for either purpose, it's, it's completely valid and fine. But I think most people want to understand how to be more well-liked and, and appreciated and respected and feel sexy in their own beingness rather than feel misdirected in some way or feel confused, okay? So beware of others misreading you or misjudging you. You've got to use the power that Casanova had. And the power that Casanova had is he had this sincerity, 
right? He would, but this would only work if you knew that, okay, this person really likes me. Like this person already really likes me. I don't need to use all this mystery and cover up, you know, and play this thing, this, this, uh, you know, play this musical instrument of seduction from very far away, whereas she's already in the band, she's already a groupie. But you're trying to lull her with the, all of these musical instruments when she's already next to you and really liking you, okay? So you gotta make sure that you understand that pattern. You know how I talk about this idea that I got from the book, the, I believe it's the, what was it? The Loneliness Epidemic, what was it? It's something by Teal Swan, right? Where she talks about water emotions and ice emotions, right? So similarly to that, there's subconscious emotions that she's feeling, but what's coming out is this polite discourse. And it's good to have insinuation when there's like really polite discourse happening. So it's like a little, it's like a tiny comment, right? It's not too much. It's like flirtation, but like subtract a little bit of flirtation from it in a sense. So it's like a tiny, it's a mini flirtation in a sense where you're talking, 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 you're making a comment or like, oh, you have like spinach stuck in your teeth. And then you go back into the comment. Now you're insinuating that they don't take care of themselves. Okay. That's what you're suggesting. That's what you're presupposing. Right. And so you go on with the comment, 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 comment. Now, eventually later on, let's say you start dating her years from now, then she might bring up the fact that, oh man, I always get this spinach stuck in my teeth. Remember that time when you, and she still remembers, right? Because women are very intuitive. They'll pick up different things that you tell them and, and remember, like <laughs> some people are more photographic memory. I'll agree. It's not like a gender thing, but oftentimes you'll notice that the things you've said, the emotional things you've said, because they've been interpreted emotionally. One of the great things to practice is emotional congruence to specific behaviors. If you have issue with eye contact, for instance, there's YouTube videos you can play with just women holding eye contact with you on the screen and you just practice holding that, okay? If you have issues with, let's say, expressing yourself or talking on the spot or saying different things, then you practice doing that, right? Always calibrate, always calibrate. Like for, for instance here, right? I would start speaking in English, but then I also speak Bengali, so I would say, up near Tumi Bangla Bolo, right? And that will kind of ease the understanding of like, oh, this person speaks my language. If they, I can chill a little bit. Or if they do speak English, you know, I speak to them in English because clearly I have more of a mastery over that language than Bangla. Of course, I can understand Bengali. I can, I can speak it, but I can't read it. I can say it, I can verbalize it. Just like in Hindi, I can't verbalize that much, but. Uh, I can understand it when I hear it. So, in a sense, in a sense, sounds like innocence, right? In a sense. <laughs> That's funny. So, basically, you're targeting this person's inner world, right? Their, their own mind. You are tapping into their unconscious mind, basically through your language. That's what insinuation is. That's what suggestibility is. So, you know, again, you you really wanna have your ethics in order for this because you don't wanna just like, you know, hypnotize somebody uh, into being a mindless zombie around you because that's not fun either, right? It's not fun to have somebody underneath your control and you have that guilt or that repression of guilt or like, oh, I'm controlling this person or I'm trying to like get them, you know, that's, that's really not going to help. At least that's what I've noticed in my journey, right? A lot of uh, people don't really look at the proper ethics of seduction, sexuality, dating, you know, interpersonal dynamics, things like this. So when you insinuate things, it's got to be very non-attached. You're just kind of throwing it out and then you're like, oh yeah, by the way, but, and then you sort of go into your other topic. So it's like a subtle thing that you'd say, <laughs> right? Like it could be something very weird, 
also it kind of spikes the emotion and then uh, sort of it it goes away right so it could be even a suggestive or something sexual in a sense right um, this can only be done if someone has that level of sexual humor or they actually understand what you're saying and going on not a lot of people are attuned to sarcasm or like these different things so you got to know your context and the environment that you're in right you're trying to create a seductive atmosphere around you so it's more so that you're working on your feeling good and your essence and how you're communicating and how it's coming across right like there, there's this pure desire like i want somebody but i'm also not attached i'm in my own world i'm doing my own thing right doing this looking over here doing that but still what is going on there's an invisible world happening okay maybe there's a little bit of uh touch happening this person is sitting really close to you but you're not even really interacting with them you're kind of putting your arm on next to them they're touching your arm a little bit but then you're looking away this side right and this is an uh, this is a very slight insinuation in a sense where you're like i'm comfortable being near you i'm com comfortable touching you but at the same time i'm not trying to get to know you i'm not being needy at the same time right so you're kind of like you you have your you know hand over them but then you're looking away and, and redirecting the conversation elsewhere now this this is just a uh, I'm, I'm telling you this because you got to understand how to verbalize this also do this with your body language your body language and your what is unsaid oftentimes is subconscious right so it's the little mannerisms that will really get into that other person's brain oh my gosh she did that you know there's lots of cool things that you can actually do and i learned this from my past relationships oftentimes when girls would be like oh that's really cute or oh that's really cool it's really good to also ask women like you know what initially attracted me about you like you know what, what was the first word you thought of me you know a lot of women you uh, nowadays at least they, they use the word sexy to describe me so not not saying that just like a boast or whatever but th that's kind of the main comment that i've gotten and that's because i intentionally work with the sacral chakra and that energy you see what i'm saying and, and so that's got to like of course i'm fine tuning that and that's coming through in my character in my beingness but at the same time i've got to understand that what are the consequences of that and how i can own that how i can really own that aspect of me where i can be you know, a very attractive, charming, charismatic type of person. You know, if I really put my mind to it, if you put your mind to it, man, you could do anything, honestly, right? Because everything is mine, all is mine. Everything you see around you here was first uh, started from the mind. I mean, started from the mind, now we're here, okay? Really though, like these trees were planted, right? This thing that I'm sitting on right now, this little hut was built, right? Someone thought of it first. And so, let's say, let, let's try like a little bit of a role play, right? You're talking to someone, let's say they're from, uh, I love European girls, that's <laughs> why so I'm usually like Sweden, Europe, Norway, you know, that's why I'm just saying, I mostly dated white girls my whole life, so, you know, in a sense, uh, it's very different being with Indian girls now all of a sudden, uh, it's, it's a big shift in, in kind of mentality as well. But yeah, man, um, let's say that she's Japanese or something, you know? And you're talking about Japan, you're talking about anime or whatever. And uh, you kind of just throw it in, like, just a, a comment that you make. Like... You're not like the, the cute kawaii Japanese. You're like kind of the, the ferocious, like, uh, grunge Japanese, you know? Like, just a teasing comment or whatever, right? Like, um... <laughs> that was a silly one, but it's kind of funny, right? Just kind of throw it out like a tease. I don't think you're the cute kawaii type of Japanese girl, though. I think you're dangerous. I think you're a badass. I think you're going to steal my, uh, you know, socks at night or something. And then you just change topic immediately, right? Real quick, next topic. Now, after a while, she won't even notice that comment. She'll be like, okay, he's just judging me or he's, he's interpreting something about my culture. Or he, has, he doesn't know anything about Japan. What a weirdo. Or whatever. She might, she just, you know, whisks it away. But then after a while, she starts thinking like, 
Oh, that's funny. And and it it's like she creates the inside joke in her own mind. So she thinks that it's her joke. But you actually installed it. Okay, right? You were the person who planted the seed. You were the gardener in the beginning of this whole novel. But she's coming in and, you know, let's say you're eating food together or whatever. And she uses a, she's using a knife. And you say, you make a comment like, careful with that or whatever. He says, well, I'm a badass, right? I can handle myself, right? She'll make a little comment like that, going back to the original time when you told her, like, you know, you're not like the kawaii cute type of Japanese, right? And, and that is possibly one of the greatest examples I can give right now based on insinuation, because really it comes back, right? It'll come back to not bite you. It'll come back to charm you. It'll come back to, you know, kind of give you this understanding or, or like a bat signal in going off in your mind right that you go oh right i did say that cool i did say that back then understood i don't want to get into an argument that i'm gonna lose it okay i, I just don't like there's no point okay in, in arguing with most people I think arguments, oftentimes they're triggered by past responses and traumas and different things. So oftentimes it's just the tone, right? The tone that when we're arguing, it sounds really displeasing. It sounds anti-seductive to the ears. So when you're going, I can't believe that you're dead, right? That high pitched yell, no man wants to hear. And no woman wants to hear the, hey, what the? No, <laughs> right? It's like that is installed in our subconscious patterns too as an insinuation. Maybe when we were kids, we heard our parents fighting or we saw all these movies and TV shows where people were fighting. And so we have all these associations, like I was saying, right? That are tapped into this thing. So when you reassociate the fact that male woman dynamics doesn't have to be this weird fighting thing all the time, right? Men and women can just chill, interact, you know, have a good time, you know, exchange amazing, beautiful ideas. Right? Imagine a beautiful interaction of yin and yang energy where the man is naturally leading and the woman is just trusting in the development of that and just flowing in her feminine, right? It's actually such a majestic and beautiful act, but we overcomplicate it, right? We cause our own problems. We try to overburden ourselves. We try to get so in our own heads that we forget about actually having fun in the interaction. So don't get so in your head about all of these theories and datums around the art of seduction. You really have to just embody that liberty in essence, you know, that freedom, that ability to make a funny comment and then, you know, go back to it later and build on it and build a, you know, a, a skyscraper as tall as a tree. And once you really figure out that, okay, this is what is working for me, right? You have strengths automatically. You gotta optimize those strengths when you insinuate, okay? Let's say that I have an American accent, right? I'm Indian, I have an American accent. That is like a gold pill uh, <laughs> standard uh, because I'll be honest, like the Indian accent isn't the most attractive accent. I know they do it in Bollywood sometimes and it, it, it it's really refined, but they have voice actors, remember, right? They have vocal coaches who actually teach them. So I'm blessed, I'm privileged to have that. But at the same time, I have my flaws, right? I have my, my weak spots or things that I need to refine more or work on. So those flaws will automatically get corrected through me really doubling down on my strengths. You see what I'm saying? Like once I truly accept that I have these qualities and these strengths, I will be like the, the representative, the spokesperson of that in a sense. And that's, that's kind of the energy that I'm going into this whole field with, peak performance field, social dynamics, you know, communication, mindset, these different worlds, and also spirituality, of course, which definitely overrides everything. So start to understand that if you can insinuate little things, okay, if you can insinuate little things, I'm gonna take my sunglasses off to show you my eyes a little bit. Uh, 
And I'm doing that so you can gain more trust in a sense, okay? Um, <laughs> so I'm already showing you like what is, uh, how I'm planting that seed. Okay, I just took my glasses off. And, um, but I'm explaining it to you, you get what I mean? So if I just left it like that, it wouldn't be any, anything to explore or analyze. But the fact that you can actually see my eyes now uh, builds more trust, whereas earlier I was creating more of an enigma or a mystery uh, based on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's always a, a very interesting understanding. Yo, what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. So understanding the very secret technology of insinuation, you'll only learn it based on your own associations, like I said. So you have very particular associations in your mind that are confusing to you, like literally contradictory to the type of person that you're trying to be. You get what I'm saying? Like you are trying to be somebody, the, the libertine, but then you're not free. You're not, like when you make comments, it doesn't feel like the freedom that I can actually say this or do this, right? It's, it's always this hesitation, like this thing of like, oh, what will my parents think of me? Or what will society think of me? Or what if that happens? Or I can't believe when I, that's not libertine, okay? That's in your head guy. That is being confused guy. That is not knowing where you are, what you're doing. I don't have any guidance guy, okay? So when you start speaking to yourself in this uncertain, anxious way, and think about this, right? A lot of people get anxious because they can't control something. Ooh, ooh, this is deep. Okay, a lot of people, they get hesitation because they feel like I can't control this situation. And the reasons we get angry at someone is we feel that we are technically stronger than them smarter than them or we're above them in some way that's why we can get angry at someone else because somebody stronger than us who can beat us up or somebody who is way smarter than us they can win the argument we're not gonna argue and you know get angry with them but what if someone is showing absolutely no emotion you can't even get an emotional response from them you like poke them with a stick you try to like you know do things to annoy them and they're just like whatever right those people can be very attractive too but there's got to be a willingness to emote, as, as we mentioned, right? There's got to be some level of emotion that comes through that's, that signifies, that symbolizes I have healthy emotions. I don't have weird emotions. Like, I'm not, like, you know, mentally breaking down. Because what does that symbolize? Like, in the future, I might be mentally breaking down, right? In a moment where I have my family and my kids are there, I'm mentally breaking down and I can't take care of the kids, right? And so genetics is always speaking through us and for us in a lot of these different issues, okay? So we really got to respect that aspect of it, okay? That aspect of it is very, very powerful. And if you can establish that connection, okay? If you can establish that connection with yourself, you will be on top of this game, man. You'll be one of the people that we really think about when we think of this topic. So keep winning keep going keep insinuating keep suggesting get those innuendos in there okay so if someone says something like you know no you got to put your finger in there right to to make it work i go oh i, I do do i right <laughs> and it's just a casual rolling off the tongue and then you change the topic easy okay anything can be interpreted as funny or sensual or goofy or uh quirky or more intellectual or you know anything can be made to be something or look like something else and this is the true freedom and the power of the libertine and this archetype of completely just coming up with your own narrative and planting these seeds being the gardener of other people's subconscious mind but you also got to be a gardener of your own subconscious mind if you really want to run this thing you get what i mean let's get it upward spiral gang hit that like and subscribe button May we never be the same again, guys. Woo, sheesh. You already know. Skr, skr.